All right, welcome. In this video, I want to sort of continue where we left off in the last video, where uh, I showed how, or at least we figured out how we could flip Mario horizontally using the scale method here. So by changing the x coordinate to minus one, and then we realized we also had to draw them, draw Mario in a different location, which was on the negative side of the plane now, minus x minus w. And if we did that, when we got Mario, we can flip Mario over the vertical axis here, um, giving a, a flip to the left. We can also flip over the horizontal axis now by doing this, the scaling also in the uh, vertical direction here. But it means we need to change our minus x minus w to uh, back to x and our, our y to minus y minus the height. And that's the same pattern we just saw and that will flip Mario uh, upside down. And now, um, perhaps we could also guess if we do it in both directions, and now we have Mario completely flipped over. Now this actually also corresponds to doing a 180 degree rotation on Mario. And so what I actually wanna do in this video is uh, talk about rotation. Uh, and just a reminder from the last video, that when we rotate, we're not rotating the image, we're rotating the canvas. And so that's what's gonna cause us a little problem. As you can see here, um, the problem is sort of vis visual now, uh, which is I've tried to rotate by uh, pi over two, which is 90 degrees here. Uh, let's try a simpler one for the moment. Let's try uh, pi. Let's see if that fixes anything. Pi is of course 180 degrees, which was the rotation we just uh, simulated with two scales um, and we can't see Mario so just by doing rotate again we have rotated the canvas now remember last time when when we flipped the canvas we flipped it over this left hand so we are now into the negative space on the on the left just like flipping over the, over the top here would put us into the negative space up above well rotating 100 degrees actually puts us in the minus minus space up in the top left which is where we were going with our scale here when we did the minus minus like this. We, we put ourselves into that minus minus quadrant of our space. So what that means is the part of the canvas that we want to draw on is likewise also in that minus minus space. So for now, let's try uh, and draw here and see what happens. So what has happened is we have indeed flipped, we have drawn in the right location in the minus minus space, but when we're in the minus minus space, we've flipped everything up completely upside down and flipped it also to the left, or rather again, specifically we've rotated at that 180 degrees. So instead of drawing down and to the right, we end up drawing up and to the left. And of course that's going to be a problem if what we wanted was for our Mario to be inside the rectangle then what we need to do is again offset Mario um, and we can probably already guess since we did it above with our with our scale operator uh, we can use the same uh, minus W and minus H minus the width and minus the height and that will put Mario back where he belongs all right, let's say we change the to 90 degrees now. Now what we wanted to do is rotate Mario by 90 degrees, not 180 degrees. Could we do that? Well, again, we've, I've changed it to rotate by 90 degrees. We've now rotated the canvas up into the, into the space above us, which means the, the Y direction has flipped on us, not the, H, not the X direction. So I'm just gonna try minus Y here and see what happens there. Okay, and once again, we can see here that the minus y has not really drawn, there's not really any way we can draw Mario inside this rectangle now, but if we do want the top left corner of the Mario image we're drawing to be in the top left corner of that rectangle, then we're still not getting it exactly right. But now by trying minus h, we can see yes, indeed, we can move Mario into that proper location inside that rectangle where we want. Mario. Now again, in this particular case, we've rotated by 90 and we've, and we've drawn Mario um, and we've been able to sort of calculate in our own mind where we would need to draw Mario to get that proper rotation that we're looking for. Now, 
this has worked because we've I've fixed myself to 180 degrees or 90 degrees and those particular rotations are the easy ones to do the calculations for the trigonometry if we want to do 45 degrees or something else then where we need to draw is no longer a simple plus minus x y it now has we now need to do some cosines and sines and so on to calculate where we need to be um, that's one way we can do it in fact that's one strategy um, although another way we can do that is instead of rotating around the the origin which is the top left corner here a strategy we could do is we can before rotating translate the origin somewhere else say the top left corner of mario here where we want him or the center point of mario that's another possibility and then rotate around that depending on which one we want so what i've done in this case is i've translated the origin to xy which is 100 100 which is this top left corner of our rectangle here. And then I've called rotate of 90 degrees. That will rotate us 90 degrees. And at the moment, I'm gonna say draw us at zero, zero, because drawing us at zero, zero will draw us at that same location where we've translated to. So let's try that out. And we can see that we've kind of got what we wanted here. We've got Mario again being drawn from that location there, but we don't have the top left corner appearing where we wanted it to be. But again, by applying the minus H translation that we applied up above there, we can now move Mario into the proper location. Now, again, we can do this type of rotation to allow us to rotate the canvas around where we want to paint Mario instead. But the other way we're going to do it, and this is the strategy that I'm going to, again, borrow from Seth Lab, but uh, pitch for you uh, as well, is to rotate the image you want off screen. Rotate it somewhere else. Don't rotate it. Since, since rotating rotates the whole canvas, let's just focus on the image by itself. Rotate it off screen and then paint what we want from that rotated image onto the, onto the canvas that we want to paint. So when I need to rotate images at arbitrary angles, I will usually use this strategy here. Now this isn't the full strategy. I will use, usually take this strategy and embed it inside of a method and then use that method to export the image that's rotated and save it afterwards. And the reason for that is if we save that image, we save ourselves the, uh, the cost of doing this rotation again the next time we need that image rotated and the cost of doing rotation is very high so if we can save ourselves the cost of rotation that's going to save us some energy uh, energy in our uh, machine going through the you know the graphics processor might save us might you know save us a little bit of heat in our in our pc but if we're doing this kind of rotation on a device that's maybe not uh, a pc like a tablet or a phone then we're talking about battery power here we're talking about you know heating up that device so if we want to actually save energy uh, and save battery power there we don't want to be doing rotations all the time the rotations are very expensive and so it's better for us to rotate off screen save it and then next time say we know we need to rotate this image to 45 degrees a lot well we'll just save it somewhere at 45 degrees and every time we need it we will we will recap it now here what we've got is how we can rotate an arbitrary image and this is sort of an interesting case i haven't got all of this uh, uh, set up with sort of general parameters here i'm using the fact that our mario is a 16 by 32 bit image and so what we're going to have to do here or pixel image what we're going to do here is i'm going to create a little off-screen canvas that is big enough for me to rotate mario at any angle i want and still be able to draw Mario on there. And so I'm going to, instead of using a 16 by 32 canvas, I'm going to use a 32 by 32 canvas. I've just taken the maximum of those two to make it into a square. So I've ended up making a 32 by 32 canvas here. Okay, so this is the first bit. Now let, maybe I'll, I went a little too quick through there, so I'll do one, one more uh, backtrack here. I've gone here to the document again. Now remember the document is the tree of HTML tags. And instead of asking it, you know, get element by ID, I've instead 
said, create an element, make me a new element. What kind of element? Make me a canvas element. Okay. Now this is off screen in the sense that it doesn't appear anywhere in the document, meaning we don't see it when we do this. It's not part of that document. And so that's why we've given it the name, at least off screen canvas. We set its width and height, and then we grab its context. Remember, we only draw to its context, so that's just part of the setup of the canvas. Once we have that, we're ready to go. Now we have this sort of invisible context or invisible canvas off screen that we can draw whatever we want to. And, and the, the last piece of the puzzle that we're going to use here is when we're done drawing to it, we can treat that off screen canvas as though it's an image itself. And then we can draw it on our, on our actual canvas. So that's what we're going to do. So let's see, we've got this off screen canvas. We save it so at the end we can restore it and, and look at what, it, at what we've drawn. Um, and the first thing we do is we translate. Now I put 16, 16 here. Those might look like magic numbers. Well, it's just 32 divided by 2. Translating 16, 16 means move the, the origin of my canvas to the middle of this 32 by 32 canvas that I have. Why am I going to do that? Because usually when we're rotating an image, we want to rotate around the middle of that image. Okay. Now I'm going to choose the rotation, whatever rotation I want. The one I've got here in my code, let's do um, just uh, math.py for now, which is uh, 180 degrees. Then I'm going to untranslate, translate back before I draw. So I moved to the middle, rotated it, moved back. Now I'm going to draw it. Now be careful here because my image is 16 by 32. I have chosen to draw this at position 8, 0 instead of 0, 0. That's going to center Mario a little bit when I draw Mario in that, uh, in that canvas, that 32 by 32 canvas. That's going to give me a little transparent bar on the left hand side and the right hand side of about eight pixels long, of exactly eight pixels long. So that's just going to draw Mario in the middle of that space now. So when I flip him, hopefully he will be rotated right around the, you know, his belly button, the middle of him. And that will, uh, again, hopefully give us what we're looking for now. What I've got here is again, I just restore that. So that's going to allow, that image is going to snap back after the, all the translation and rotation we've done here, that's going to unrotate it. So it now, the image looks rotated to us instead of the canvas. And then the last step here, maybe this is the last little bizarre step, is I'm going to draw to our actual canvas. I'm going to call draw image as normal. Where normally above I'm passing it the sprite sheet, I'm now going to pass it this off screen canvas that we've got here. I pass it that instead. Now I'm also, this minus 24 is 8 times 3 because um, just like the times three up here, I draw everything three times as big on my canvas to make it uh, uh, appear big enough for us to see. So this is just drawing that offset again, where our rectangle here is 16 by 32, but now this off-screen canvas that I've drawn or that I've created is um, 32 by 32. I'm going to now shift it back by those eight pixels. And again, since everything is three times bigger, that's actually 24 pixels. So let's try that here. Uh, the only other thing you'll notice here is I'm using height instead of width in my, uh, in my width column. And that's because my height is uh, 96, which is uh, 32 times three. Uh, and since we've changed our image from being 48 by 96, to being 96 by 96, at least the size that we want to draw it. That's why I've used H in both categories there. So we can see we flipped Mario exactly 180 as I suggested. Let's try a different one, 90 degrees. And we can see that Mario is actually rotated around its, his middle element, its middle point. And so maybe that's what we wanted here. Maybe not. If not, then you might need to change your little helper function here. But now instead of just 90 degree rotations, we can do arbitrary rotations and they work out the way we expect. So if you need to rotate uh, one of your sprites in or animations in your game, then uh, here's the technique that I would suggest using. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in that next video.